Hello, and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today, we're going to be solving lead code problem 316, remove duplicate letters. Given a string S, remove duplicate letters so that every letter appears once and only once. You must make sure your result is the smallest in lexicographical order among all possible results. Let's look at a basic example. We have an example here where our string is B, C, A, B, C. Now, what are the counts of each letter? So we have two Bs, we have a one A, and we have what? Two Cs, right? So that means that we need to get rid of a C and we need to get rid of a B. So our final answer will be some sort of um, variation of A, B, C. Now, you're probably looking at it and you can say, okay, well, we can just chop these two and we're done, right? Mm, wrong, because the answer is actually A, B, C. Why is it not B, C, A, uh, but instead it's A, B, C, right? They both get rid of the letters such that each one occurs once and only once. Remember that we need to actually put our solution in lexicographical order. So what this means is that, say this was a dictionary, A, B, C would come before B, C, A, because obviously A comes before B. So we actually prefer this solution. So that's the reason why it's A, B, C instead of B, C, A, even though they both satisfy the removing duplicates um, parameter. So we need to keep that in mind when we're working through our solution. Now, let's wipe this away and work through a second example talking through the intuition. It is a little bit convoluted, um, and it's one of those problems where you really just need to see it once and you'll get it forever. Uh, figuring out on your own is a little bit tricky, but let's see if we can um, get the intuition down and then code it up. It's actually quite simple to code. The intuition is just a little bit tricky, so hopefully the explanation helps you guys. See you guys in the next bit. Okay, so we looked at the basic example and we saw how it might work. And we saw that removing duplicate letters is easy, but getting the smallest in lexicographical order is really hard. And what this comes down to is making sure that when we add something to our result, that actually we're not doing it in a way such that it prevents us from getting the smallest lexicographical order. And the way to do this is a little bit tricky, I'm not gonna lie, so please pay attention and we'll see how we can do this. Now, what we want to do for this problem, and I'll kind of go through the solution here as we work it. Um, the first thing is we need to actually keep a map which maps each character to the rightmost position that we see it in. And the reason we want to do this is to make sure that we're actually making the um, smallest lexicographical string. Because, for example, if we take the string C here and then we add B, even though these are both unique, because there is another B uh, later on, we actually might be losing an order here, right? So if we went and tried to take C, B, A, D, this actually isn't the best lexicographical order we could get because it's actually A, C, D, oops, D, B, right? So whenever we place a character, if there is that same character later on in the string, then we actually want to remove um, anything that we've taken in our result so far because doing that will actually not guarantee the uh, lexicographical smallest solution. So let's not get too ahead of ourselves. The first thing we need to do is build this dictionary. So we're going to go over left to right and do this. So for each character we have C, um, B, A, and D. What is the rightmost position that it occurs at? So C will actually occur at the last index, which is seven in this case. B will occur at, what is this? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. A will occur at only one, which is the second index. And D will occur at zero, one, two, three, four, at the fourth index. So now that we have this, we can actually start going through our string and processing it to build the solution. So the second thing we want to do is we want to initialize a string builder which is going to act as our result. So we're going to say a res and we're going to use this as a stack and you'll see what we do in a second. And then we also need a scene set which is going to keep track of all the characters that we've already worked with. Once we take a character and add it to our string builder, we'll assume that um, it's good to go unless the smallest lexicographical order is violated. So we have this set. 
and the algorithm will proceed as follows. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go from left to right over our string, and if our string builder is empty, then that means that we can't do anything. We'll simply take our character as it comes. So let's kind of look through our solution at each point. So res at this point is gonna be empty, and scene is going to be empty as well. So the first thing that we do is we take the C because that's the first character. We can't do anything at this point. So now we are at the B, right? When we get to the B, we can see that actually B is lexicographically smaller than C, right? B comes before C, so we might have a problem here with this property. If there exists another B later in the string, then this will actually violate our lexicographical property Sorry, if there's another C um, in the string, then we're gonna violate it. So what we wanna check is that the current index, which is one, is it less than the index that the next C occurs at? So we're gonna look into our dictionary here and we're gonna get seven, right? So that means that there is um, a C later on that we could use that would not violate our lexicographical order. So instead of using this C, we're gonna use one of the later ones uh, in our dictionary because that means that we can guarantee that B will come before C, right? If, do, if we did this, C, B, then that wouldn't be the right answer. Now, this is only the case when there is another C that comes after our current B, right? If this is the last C, then there's nothing we can do about it. So we'll simply take uh, C, B. So that's what we do. So because we have this property that there is another uh, C, then we actually need to get rid of our result here. So we're gonna get rid of C from our um, uh, result here, and we're also gonna remove it from scene. And now we can put B into it because we've now seen it. So we now scene B. Now what we wanna do is we wanna go to the next character, which is A, right? And we're gonna do the same thing, right? A occurs at index two, but remember, we don't want B A. We want ideally A to come before B because we have this potential to violate the lexicographical order. So we're gonna check, is there a later B which we could take, which we could use to build A, B instead of B, A? And there is because A occurs at index two, but B is occurring at index six. So we could just take the later B. We don't need to take this B from here. We can take the later one. So what this means, is that um, we simply get rid of our B because we can use a later one and we don't need it. So we can remove it from our scene because we need to process it again. So now we have A and that's fine. So we can move forward with our string. So now we're going to get C in here and that's fine uh, because A comes before C. We don't have to worry about the check now. So, oh, sorry, in our scene set, we have A and C. Now what we wanna do is we process the next character, which is the D. So D comes after C, so we don't have to worry about lexicographical anymore because these are sorted, and we can add it to our scene set. Now what we do is we reach another C, but we've already taken one because it's in our scene set, so we actually don't need to process it. We can move on to the next B, and now we get to B again. Now what we do at B, B actually comes before D, but because there is no other B for us to take, this is the last possible one, we have to take it. We cannot do the same um, removal that we did in the previous step because there is actually no other B. This is the final B. We're at index six through our iteration, and this is the last position of a B, so we have to take it. So we take B and add it to our scene set, and then we process the string one more time uh, to get the last character, which is C, but we've already seen C, so we actually don't need to do anything. Then our iteration will finish, and we simply you know, join our result together because it asks for a string, and we return the string A, C, D, B. So this is our final solution, which as you can see is what we expect here. So this is a little bit confusing. As we go through the code, I'll again explain it as we go, but let's kind of review what we've done here. The first thing we do is we build a map which maps each character in our input string and the last position that it occurs at. The second thing that we do is we initialize a result and a scene set, 
And then what we want to do is iterate left to right over our um, input here. And what we do with this is we're going to be basically checking whether or not we can take a character uh, and add it to our result and our scene set. And we need to process um, any point where two characters are adjacent, but if the second one actually comes before it, and that character that came before exists somewhere later in the string, we want to get rid of this original character from our result. So we'll pop it from our result here, and then we'll use the later one to ensure that we can get the, again, lexicographical order. So that's the general overview of the algorithm. It's a little bit confusing. Again, if this is kind of not making sense to you, go back over the explanation or maybe just watch the code. I'll again explain it line by line, but that's the general gist. The real tricky part is just handling this lexicographical order. Uh, and then what you really need to understand is that you know, when we have two characters next to each other and one actually comes before it in the dictionary, then we need to check whether that previous character comes later in the string because we could just use it later. And then instead of having CB, uh, we could have potentially um, BC, which obviously will come before it. So anyway, I'm going to stop blabbing. I think I've explained it as best as I can at this point. Let's now go to the code editor and type this up. And hopefully everything will be clear for you when you see the live code. I will see you there momentarily. Okay, we are in the code editor. Let's type this up. So remember that the first thing we want to do is actually build the mapping from each character in our input string here to the last position that it occurs in the string. So what we're going to do is we're going to say the last position is going to equal to a dictionary where we have the character and the index for i char in enumerate uh, s. So basically, if we see a character again, we will simply just overwrite the index that we saw it at and that will build the mapping. Now remember that we need our result. So we'll just call it a string builder and this will be an empty list. And we also need a scene set, which will obviously be empty in the beginning because we haven't processed any characters. Now what we want to do, remember, is to go from left to right over our string and process it. So we're going to say for i character in enumerate uh, our string here. What we want to do is if the character has not already been seen, then we need to process it. And we'll assume that if a character has been seen, um, then we don't need to process it anymore because we will have done all the requisite checks. So we're going to say if char not in scene, then this is the point where we need to actually check whether our current character, if we added it to the string builder, might violate the lexicographical um, property. So we're going to say while string builder, because remember, we are always comparing to the last character that we added. That's why we're basically using string builder as a stack, like I mentioned. Um, while the string builder, because if there's nothing in there, then we can't compare the previous character. So if we have something in our string builder, and the current character is actually less than string builder of minus one. So the reason that we can do this comparison is because they're both um, characters and we can actually see which one will come before it. Uh, you can do this sort of uh, string comparisons in Python uh, to see if a character comes before another one. So if our current character actually comes before whatever is currently at the top of our stack here and oops and whatever is at the top of the stack actually has a later character, then we can remove it from the stack. So we're going to say if the, um, let's see, so we called it the last position. So if the last position of whatever is at the top of our stack is actually, uh, sorry, if I is actually less than, so if that character actually occurs later on in the string, then we can actually pop whatever is at the top of the string builder. So remember, this is the case when we had CB in our string builder, we just added B and we wanted to check if there's a later C we could take such that we could get the string like BC instead of CB because obviously BC comes before it. So if these three conditions are met, then we can remove um, basically the character from the uh, string builder. So we're going to remove from our scene set uh, string builder dot pop. So we're going to pop from the string uh, string builder, whatever is at the top, and then we're going to discard that from our scene set. 
because we don't want it in there anymore. We now need to reprocess that character later on. So we would remove, you know, CB, we'd remove the C, and then we'd need to process it later on. And B would just be remaining. Okay. Uh, once this, um, sorry, after we do this while loop, if it even runs, then what we want to do is we want to say scene.add the char because we just processed it. We've already seen it. So we don't want to do it again. And then we also want to say string uh, builder dot append the char. So that will append the char there. And this is all we need to do. This is the loop that we do. This will go through uh, from left to right and do everything. So if we at the end, all we need to do is just join our string builder and return it. So join and string builder. So this, let me just double check. I didn't make any syntax mistakes. It looks fine. And this should be accepted. Perfect. So what is the time and space complexity of our algorithm? So the time complexity here, what do we do? We build this um, dictionary here, which involves going over all of the um, characters. So this is going to be a big O of N operation. And then we're basically going to loop over um, all of the characters here. So this is big O of N. And that is really it because even though we have this nested while loop the worst case is it will run in i guess the last um no could it be the first position but ah, sorry uh, i'm just confusing myself essentially this while loop will never process more characters than there are in this whole thing so this entire um, logic here is just big O of N because we only process each of the characters once because we're using kind of the scene set. So we don't actually do anything uh, multiple times. So this entire block here, even though we have the nested while loop is actually going to be uh, big O of N because we're only going to process the characters once as we go from left to right. And then obviously doing this join operation will also be big O of N because we need to join all the characters in the worst case, there'll actually be no duplicates in which case, um, you know, it's just going to be all the characters um, that we need to join. So the time complexity here is going to be a uh, big O of N. Now space complexity, you're probably thinking, oh, it's going to be a big O of N as well, but it's actually big O of one. And the reason for that is if we actually go to the description here, um, we can see that the constraints of this problem is that S actually only consists of lowercase English characters, which means that the maximum amount of space in our dictionary will be 26 in the case that all 26 English lowercase letters are in S. Same with our string builder and scene. Um, we know upfront that the maximum is going to be big O of 26, which is just asymptotically big O of one. So that's how you solve this problem. Again, quite a tricky one. I really don't like it. Explaining it is a bit of a pain in the ass, but we got through it and hopefully this video helped you. Anyway, like I said, if the video helped you, why not give it a like and a subscription? It really helps the channel grow and it shows me that you enjoy these videos. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.